show business, huh? Oh, my, my goodness, it's nothing like one of those nice, quiet ballads well, just to get things started. I've never had to sit in this dress. <laughs> I you mean we're going to get some surprise here? <laughs> Every time I do your show, I always end up with something I never sat in before. <laughs> hey, first of all, this, I don't even know where to start to congratulate you. The TV things, the, the big new contracts in Vegas, headlining, and uh, reviews that are dynamite. It is, you're really... You're really there, superstar. It's huh? big fun. It's wonderful. Are you having fun with it? Oh, shoot, yeah. We have a wonderful time, you know. <laughs> no, that's the first thing you've got to remember. Superstars don't say, shoot, yeah. <laughs> you say it's marvelous. You don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding. Tell me about it. Oh, well, first, well, I'm telling you the newest thing we're doing. We got a whole new country family now called the Over the Hillbillies. And we, I'm telling you, it's high. I'm telling you, Charlie Pride would be proud. <laughs> I'm telling you, the brown bomber, she gets a little, get my little cowboy hat on, well, we hold down. But I mean, who's, who is it comprised of? Well, uh, we have our regular like, rhythm section, and we have, uh, we have a gentleman who plays the git fiddle. Yeah. And then steel guitar and the banjo and stuff. Baby, we give it to him. Country have you put down. A, have, you, have you put this kind of concept in your act yet? Oh yeah, that's what we just, we put this in as our finale in the last act. Baby, they come from fur and wide. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me, that's the funniest thing I've ever heard. Oh, yeah. this, is, this lady not only knows every dance, disco queen and Miss Funk, as well as being Miss Elegance, but now to be Miss Country over the hill billies. <laughs> I couldn't stand it myself, but I've adjusted. <laughs> now, for those of you in the audience who may not know, Lola and I have been friends and uh, associates in show business for many, many years. And we were on Broadway together. Uh, I might say that as I look at her, as a, beside as a friend, as I look at her, I get a kind of a proud feeling. I mean that. I do, because of the fact that, uh, hey, there's a little, I had something to do with it. I know, you had a lot to do with it. But uh, you did it all now on your own. And uh, for instance, what, are you affected now by what a critic might write about you? No, no, because uh, I judge by the audience. I think uh, after you learn your trade, then how to best perform it and to be the most honest about it comes from the audience. So I do a number in the show every night that really says thank you because I learn the most from the audience. I mean, once you learn to sing and dance, that's technique. But then to perform, you have to go for that level of honesty that only the masses can buy. And that has to be very simple and very pure. And so when they write something and the audience is, contradicts what they write, I go by the audience because the audience pays for my life, not the critic, you know? Yeah. And the, um, well, that's a hard decision to make, and you have to, usually it takes a lot of years in this business before a performer gets to that point, for those of you here in the audience and at home, because you have to make a, a level. I remember about, about five or six years, maybe a little more than that, about eight, nine years ago, I made a decision in my life that I wanted to be the same guy, unless I was doing a dramatic part, I wanted to be the same guy on a, in a nightclub or on television that I would be if you met me on the street. And it took a long time to get there. But I would like to think that people say, yeah, you're just like you are on television. Or you're just like you are when I saw you in the club. But that's a very good, astute answer. Good observation, because honesty does pay off. Let me tell you something. You cannot lie, because the only thing that can touch a mass of people is the soul, because the soul can't lie. Now, when you start to deal with the mind, the mind will negotiate. It's like you, yeah. <laughs> That's why they say your first instinct is correct. Your first time something your soul says, don't do that. Then after a while, the mind gets lazy or gets busy or whatever, and it starts to negotiate and say, look, now you don't have to pay that no more. Why don't you try so and so? And next thing you know, you're in trouble. So my first instinct is what I feel. And that's about it. And it's always moment to moment. That's why I like it so much. It's just, it's just right there. You can taste and touch it. Well, when you do a commercial, for instance, like you've been associated with the with Tigress, right? Yeah. Now, you still associated with them? Uh, I mean, are you going to do any more commercials? 
I don't know. They made so much money, they didn't call me again. <laughs> you won an award, too, didn't you? I know. Maybe that frightened them. I don't know. Here come the tigress. Here come it the... was cute, honey. I loved it. Out there, my little leery tarts. Leery tarts. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, now, people look at you. Now, I know you. The family knows you as, as one type of person who loves to sit around barefoot or with Levi's on. But to millions of people now, you've become a sex symbol. Yes, I know. <laughs> do, you, do you find the weight heavy? <laughs> Not really, because I never take it seriously. If they take it seriously, then they won't think it's, it's uh, fun anymore because... Um, for me, a sex symbol is, is what I saw when I was in the movies growing up, you know, like Mae West, you know, she was, I guess you can say it because she, I saw it on the late night movies, you know, and she'd walk up and say, is that a gun in your pocket, big boy? You're just glad to see me. <laughs> I love it. But in other words, in other words. But they were always buxom women, you yeah. know, and they was just sitting up there and everything. I'm just lucky to wink, let on Blake. <laughs> We'll be right back with more Lana, Lola for Lana. <laughs> After these words of the Colgate Bob Island Company. Dude, I'm lucky to be here.